So, this is your engine. This is the clutch right here. This is the happy little piston that goes up and down. So the cylinder normally sits on top here. And you have your little explosion of fuel and oxygen going on here, which pushes the piston. And um, I'll do it from here. So when the you know piston's pumping up and down, the engine goes like this, except normally, you know, it's the piston moving this, not this moving the piston. So you just go in like this, round and round and round. Um, and as you can see, so this is the clutch when you'd have the clutch lever all the way out, so if you're driving normally. So um, the piston moves and then um, all these gears move at the same speed the clutch is moving because uh, they're all connected by this one here. So what we'll do is we'll take the clutch off and see what difference that makes. So, the basic idea here is that you've got so we've got this clutch here, and we've got this front plate which is screwed in, and then inside we've got a bunch of different parts. So you've got these four bits here, which are the clutch plates, and then in between them you've got little silver plates and then the clutch discs. And the idea is that um, all of these ones are connected to this front clutch plate and all the silver ones in between are connected to the um, to the drive shaft from the engine. And um, see now you can see that there's a lot of space in between them, like you can move them apart. When all the springs were on and that was pressurized, um, they were held together and these are made of friction material kind of like um, you'd find on a brake pad and so in between each one of these is connected to the drive shaft from this side and all these ones are connected to this clutch housing you see that they're sort of notched in here um, so when these discs are moving the clutch housing will move which will move this gear here which will move all these components connected to it uh, which will make you know the actual bike move uh, but the idea is that um, when there's space between them and they're free like this, um, you can actually spin this whole clutch housing and you notice now the piston isn't actually moving. Um, and if we were to put those springs back on, basically all that's doing is um, creating a whole bunch of uh, tension here and pushing all of these together. When all of these are held really tightly together because they're friction material, uh, if you hold all these tightly together and try and move this plate at the same time like I'm doing now, <coughs> it's really really hard. Um, and if you applied enough force there then the piston would start moving again. So you can see if I spin it like I did before, piston not moving. And then if I push really hard on it and try and spin it, I can't quite get enough torque but um, the, uh, the piston would start moving as before. So basically all you're doing when you're um, letting the clutch pedal or lever in and out is uh, changing the force with which these four and the little plates in between them um, are held together and that changes the amount of friction between them and that means that either um, this whole assembly will spin and spin all the gears next to it um, or that just this inner part will spin freely um, meaning that no power is actually transferred through to the gears and then through the chain um, so that's the clutch side of the engine this is your kickstarter gear uh, and this is this is part of the alternator right here actually no sorry that's the ignition um, and then you come through this side, and this side's closed up at the moment, but this is the final sprocket, so that's where your chain goes around on this end, and then it comes down this end of the bike and connects onto the final sprocket down there. And it's your gear shift lever, oil drain plug. And then um, that's the alternator in there. Sits on that side. Um, that's pretty much it. And now what I'm going to do is put this all back together. 
you can see the effect that slowly applying that tension has. Now that we tighten all those up, this is back to how it would be when you're actually operating it. So you can see that um, there's not nearly as much space in between all of these now, like I can't move them at all. Um, so they're fully held together now. Um, so that means when we spin this front bit, the piston definitely has to move, there's no way around it. Um, and then if we were to disengage the clutch, that basically releases the pressure this way. Um, and then we allow those big gaps between here again, so I'd be able to move these. So the um, there wouldn't be much friction between the plates and they'd be able to spin freely. Each set of plates would be able to spin independently of one another. And here's one I prepared earlier, which is much prettier. Um, so this one clutches around here. So on this one it's the same thing, uh, clutch sits in there. So you've got four pistons up and down in here, two camshafts. So the pistons pump up and down. Um, and then there'd be a series of gears bringing the power over onto this shaft coming through the center here. Clutch, blah, blah, blah. And then you've got this one, which actually controls the clutch. So that moves back and forth if you do it correctly. So if you grab the clutch handle, that one fits right there. And yeah, and that's it. And then I'll show you the sprocket. So that final sprocket we were looking at would just sit right under here. And that's the alternator on this one. And then comes down here the chain and then pew 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 and that's how clutches work